everybody. It's Chris again. What are y'all up to? I mean nothing. I'm not doing anything. Just making a video stuff. So this, uh, I wanted to let y'all know that I'm back with another video. As you can tell, here I am. Um, I'm going to make this one on RAM. So I'm going to go into some detail, but not a lot because... I mean, I would have to take a lot more time and, and I'm just making these videos just to kind of give you an idea of what RAM is, what is, what is RAM, what is a CPU, just basic stuff so that you understand how a computer works. Like, I, that's what I truly want y'all to get away from this um, so that I can help y'all to get better at this so that you understand more. So, like and subscribe, comment. Help me out, Throw, do a subscribe, hit the bell, the notification button. That way you, I do two videos a week, Bible study on Sunday and technology on Wednesday. So give it a thumbs up and here we go. Let's get to it. Okay, so I wanted to ask the first question is, what is RAM? So RAM, if you look on my screen here, uh, let me see. What is RAM? Where is it? Uh, RAM, what is it? Uh, right here. So this comes from Crucial's website right here. You can see it. Uh, Crucial is actually the memory that I like a lot. I have, uh, I believe Crucial is what I actually have in my in my desktop. Um, it's also what's in one of my servers too, my big server back over that direction. Um, I have one with 64 gig of RAM in it, and I think it is Crucial. Um, so what is RAM? The, the term RAM stands for Random Access Memory, as you can see right here. It is one of the most important components. It's what actually stores the data before the it goes to the processor, right? So the processor processes. The memory stores data to be processed. So think of it this way. It's sort of like um, a, a, a trash can. Okay, let's think of it that way. That's a pretty good example. So you have all this trash you put into this can, right? And then I think for us it's twice a week the dump the trash man comes and get the and comes and gets the trash, right? So while it's in there, it's stored there until he comes and takes it away. That's exactly what RAM does. RAM is sort of like a dumpster or a bin of quick really really fast storage so it's um it's um that's what ram does it stores the data until the processor comes and grabs it and takes it away right to use okay so it says right here the more programs you have running the more you'll need so i have 32 gig in my desktop that i'm going to edit this video on right now i have 32 gig in it 64 in my server. The reason I have more in my server is because when, and I'm not going to get too far into this, but I'm going to tell you a little bit. 64 gig of RAM is a lot. That's a lot of RAM. On a server, it could be, that's pretty good for what I do with it. I run my NAS server on it, and I run my um, controller for my Wi-Fi, which is what I've said in the past. That's, that's what I do with my server. So I don't really need 64 gig of RAM, but eh, hey, I'm a nerd. Why not? Just give it all it can take, right? And it was $100 for the RAM. I may do a video on that. At some point, I may do a video on that server back there, the T410 made by Dell. I may do a video on that one because it's actually a really good server. I've had it for years. It's been running for literally years, at least a couple. So... That's what RAM does. Now, that's what RAM is, right? And that's what it does. It takes, RAM is just a temporary storage place until the processor comes and gets the data, right? It's pretty simple, actually. Now, there are a bunch of different types of RAM. There's DIMM and there's SODIMM. SODIMM is typically RAM that you will see they're little bitty things. They're little, little teensy weensy piece of sticks of RAM. Those you'll typically see in a, um, in a, um, oh, right here, in a laptop, right here. Little bitty thing. They're like that big. 
And a sodium is, um, so it's a small outline dual inline memory module. So most of what you'll use is DIM, dual inline memory module, right? Okay, there's a bunch of different ones. Um, so right here, if you look here, you can see the pins, the pin quantity. You notice, notice something here that as each generation comes out, this is DDR SDRAM, right? Here's SDRAM2 or DDR2, DDR3, DDR4. You notice DDR4 has a lot more pins. That's because it's faster. So the more pins you have, think of it this way. It's like a highway. I've said this analogy before, but think of a highway. The more lanes you have, right? The more lanes that you have on a highway, the more traffic you can pass. That's exactly how RAM works. And that's also how something called PCI Express lanes, they're the same way. So that's basically that stuff. So you just have the, the higher the generation is, the more lanes you have to pass data. And the RAM free and the frequency will get higher too. The higher the frequency, the faster it can move that traffic if that makes sense. So that's basically, so the the more lanes you have, more traffic you can have. But then when you get more traffic, then you gotta move it faster, right? Cause you don't wanna get congested. It's like when you're in Denver in traffic, it's, it's bad. Like at five o'clock, you're done for. It is terrible there at, at five o'clock. So you're just taking the RAM, you're, the RAM just takes the, the bigger the lane, the more traffic, and then the higher the frequency, the faster it can move the traffic. That's, it's that simple. It, it's not that simple. It does a lot more than that. Okay, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to get into ECC RAM, which is a error checking and correction RAM. This one's a little different because it checks to make sure that the RAM's okay. So, okay, so for instance, my Dell T410 server, when it boots up, it takes a really long time. The reason being is because it checks the RAM in the beginning. That's what error checking and correction means, right? When it checks the RAM, it corrects the errors that it sees, right? So the reason you would want that is you, when, let's say that you work for a financial institution, right? And you have, you're processing a lot of data, right? You have numbers flying all over the place. Well, what you don't want to happen is while that data is flying all over the place, the RAM stops, stops working, or you have an error that causes it to stop. With error checking and correction, it can correct those errors, whereas regular RAM can't do that, or like standard RAM that would go on a desktop. Error correction and checking, you can put them in a desktop if it's capable of doing it, but typically you only want that stuff in a server because it is a little slower, but it does correct itself, right? So you have RAM that corrects itself. So that's what, that's what I have in my server. It's error checking and correction RAM. That's what it does. So it checks bits that are generated and stored with the data, and it's more common in servers. So it just checks to make sure that the RAM that was, the data that was sent is the right data there. If it sees an error, and that's also what parity checking does. So parity right here is RAM parity. It's checking as the storing of a redundant parity bit. So data is sent in eight bits, right? Eight, bit, eight bits equals one byte. So bits, so it's sending eight bits, right? It sends nine actually. Those nine bits, that ninth bit, that very last bit is a parity checking. So it makes sure that whatever was sent is received on the other end, right? So it says right here, right here, and the subsequent comparison of the stored and computed parity to detect whether a data error has occurred. So it just compares to make sure that everything got there. Networks are similar to this too. Networks are actually very similar to this. In TCP IP or transfer control protocol, internet protocol, right? You have, it sends a, a header and in that header it has a destination IP 
and a source IP, right? It has a lot of other stuff too, but I'm not going to get into that right now. That's later, way later. Um, so it, it just basically, it numerically values, it, it numbers the packets, right? And then they get to the other end and then it sends one back saying, okay, I got that one. Send another, and it just keeps sending them. In UDP, it just keeps sending them, right? It doesn't care if they get dropped or if an error occurs. Well, parity is the same way. RAM is that way. RAM just, and that's what ECC is for. So ECC just checks to make sure that everything's right. Okay. Now let's move on to the next thing. Okay. I was going to go into the single and double sided RAM, but I'm not because it doesn't really matter. I looked all over the internet and it doesn't seem to make a difference in speed. Really. I mean, in all honesty, it doesn't. So let's do, let's go into single dual and triple channel memory. Now here's where it gets interesting. All right. So in my computer, I have single channel memory. In my server, I have dual, but it's capable of triple channel. But I don't have it running in triple channel. Triple channel just, it's, it's like takes the highway and widens it. So you have more room. That's all it does. So like if you look at this spec sheet, this is the one of my servers right here. And I am going to provide pictures of the RAM and how it's configured in there. It's set up right now in dual channel. Well, maybe it may be triple channel. I'm not, I don't really remember. But in the picture, you'll see that I, I've got four pictures or five that I'm going to put in the, in the video. And I'll put them in this spot right here. That way y'all can see them. Okay. Here are the pictures. Okay. There we go. So now y'all see them. So what happens is the, in those pictures, you will see, you'll, you're going, you're going, you're seeing that there are, it doesn't look like anything. There's a lot of little green chips about this long and they're stuck into a slot. Well, in two blue ones or two black ones, right? So two blue ones, that would be dual channel. And you're better here, here, I'm going to be honest with you. You're better off buying sets of RAM that are built for dual channel, right? Because you want the same type of RAM. Now it may work without it, but you're better off just buying the, the RAM modules, the modules that are dual for, for dual channel. So you can run, it just means two sticks. That's really all it means. Two sticks of RAM. So there's single, dual, and triple. Triple is typically what you'll see in servers, but I have, I think, four sticks of RAM, 16 gig each in my server that's running right now. And I had to run them in a particular configuration so that they would actually work the way they were supposed to, right? And I'm going to provide links to everything that I'm talking about, all of these, all of these across the top, I'm going to provide links to everything so that y'all can see it all. All right. So that's, that's about all I got. Um, if y'all got any questions, just let me know. Thank y'all for watching. The Lord loves you. And so do I. Peace out y'all till the next video.